we're going to take a look at a beautiful Seiko diver. This is the SLA051, and it is right up my alley. It's far from a perfect watch, and Seiko rarely makes a perfect watch, uh, but this one is so well done. It's so intriguing. It's so beautiful. It's, it's everything that I enjoy. I think some of you may have found my channel over the years you know, uh, researching Seiko. I've done so many Seiko videos. I've had so much experience with Seiko. I love this brand and I love a good Seiko diver. This is a good Seiko diver. So I'm excited to talk about this today. I'm excited to show the details and present this piece objectively. But uh, at the same time, it's up my alley. I love it. I might be a little bit biased, but we'll also talk about the warts. We'll talk about the negative elements. And let's start with the basic specs here. So we have 200 meters of water resistance. We have an 8035 movement within this case, which is finished very, very well. And I love the polished beveled edge. This is sharp. You know, it's a curvaceous, bulbous cushion case. Uh, and in my opinion, it is a throwback to one of Seiko's absolute best historic diver designs, the 6105, really a lovely piece. This one will have a highly texturized dial. They kind of, I don't know, how would you describe this? Stippling, but there's also some color changing, like it has a sun ray. You get lighter uh, shades of anthracite. You get deeper shades of gray. Uh, it looks good. It's subtle and it's different. And I like that. We have upgraded bezel action here when you compare it to, say, the $1,000 priced Prospects 6105 reissue. Uh, this one, you know, being three times the price, it better be better. And it does have nicer bezel action and a decent bracelet too, which is important to me because I'm a bracelet fan. The case and the bracelet will have what Seiko calls a hard clear coating, a super hard coating that is designed to deflect minor hairline wear marks, stings, and dents that happen as you wear and use your sport pieces. Um, and then continuing, we have good applied markers with Lumabrite. And in my opinion, Lumabrite is the best compound in the business. And this is done very well. It looks awesome in low light. And then we have a dome sapphire crystal. And that sapphire crystal carries inner anti-reflective treatment and it does a good job of minimizing reflections. Uh, they don't completely eliminate them, but it does enhance the clarity, and that's a good thing. And then the watch will carry an 8035 movement, which has 26 joules, a 50-hour power reserve, very sharp finish work. In fact, I'm showing you an 8035 that I had in the original SLA reissue of the 6105 from a couple years ago, and really, this is a Grand Seiko caliber that has a few tweaks, a few design changes in terms of movement architecture, but finished very, very well. In fact, I would say this is on par with Grand Seiko, and it's kind of a shame that you can't see it through an exhibition case back because I think it's beautiful enough to where you would want to look at this on a daily basis. Now we have a 28,800 beat per hour rate, which is nice because most Seiko divers carry a three hertz beat frequency. But here's the wart, guys, with this movement. The acceptable daily deviation rate from the factory is minus 10 seconds to plus 15 seconds per day. So 25 seconds over a 24 hour time frame, that's not very good. Now Seiko is notorious for under promising and then over delivering. But still, if you're going to spend close to $3,000 on a watch, you could go to Swiss competition at the same price and uh, you know get a chronometer from a couple different brands. The fact that this has such a poor deviation rate daily is so disappointing that I think if you, I don't know, if you've never spent $3,000 on a watch before, that spec alone would be enough to turn you away. It's that disappointing to a watch enthusiast, but I will say I'm getting nothing like that with this. This is running at plus three seconds per day, which is, you know, within chronometer levels of accuracy, but maybe you get unlucky and maybe you get, you know, stuck with a 13 second fast per day caliber, which you would have to take it to a watchmaker and have him regulate. And, you know, that's not the end of the world, but still it's the principle of the thing. That would be annoying. But continuing here, we have, like I mentioned, one of Seiko's best historic diver designs from decades ago. It's very wearable. It's very comfortable. In fact, you look at this and you would think looking at this and then, you know, noticing the dimensions that it would just be chunky. You know, it would be a hockey puck on wrist. And that's just not the case. It's deceptively wearable, very comfortable. 
and it looks amazing in natural light. My wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference, and I really like the way this wears and the way it feels. It doesn't feel super hefty like a Marine Master 300 does. To me, this is uh, similar to a Turtle, similar to a Sumo, similar to an SKX. And I like that. That's practical for use in uh, you know everyday life. Now, continuing, I really like the, uh, the dial texture here and the fact that we get silver printing and a blacked out date window between the four and the five o'clock position that doesn't mess with the symmetry of the dial, that doesn't break up any of the applied markers. So I do have no problems with that. And overall, the detail work is crisp and clean. The seconds hand, let's look at the seconds hand on a macro level. You guys can see this is very well executed, which is a complaint that I had on the original SLA Willard reissue, the 6105 reissue. That one had, I don't know, it almost looked like it had been hammered on. It had unevenness, it had undulation to it. And that is not the case here with this one. And I will draw your attention to the fact that this handset is uh, you know, highly beveled and one side is highly polished, the other side is blasted. So you really get a good delineation of reflection in light play. It makes the watch very legible. Whether you're in low light or no light or natural light, it's a stunner and <laughs> again, it looks good. Um, but let, let's continue here. At the end of the day, if you like Seiko, specifically if you like historic Seiko, I think you're going to love this watch because I love this watch. Is it perfect? Absolutely not, but it's done very well. You know, Seiko, they speak my horological design language when they do a really good diver that's practical and original and easy to wear. You know, you look at this and you can't mistake this for a Submariner or a Seamaster or a different watch. No, this is the 610, you know, the 6105. This has that curvaceous, bulbous cushion case with the stick hands, with the full indexing, with the crown at the four o'clock position. And uh, that's a lovely thing. That really is good. So if you like Seiko, if you like historic Seiko, I think you're going to love this watch. And I will also say that if you like the Marine Master 300, but you just can't pull it off practically in an everyday situation, uh, this is a great alternative. The Marine Master is tall and it's hefty and it's chunky and it's top heavy and it has abnormally long links in the bracelet and it does have a bulky clasp. It's not a great watch to wear every day, even though it's a very beautiful, very well executed watch. This one would be a good alternative and perhaps a better buy because you have the same movement. You have a sapphire crystal. You do have the good loom. You do have the excellent design language. This one really is the granddaddy of the Seiko turtle design. It's it's really good. So uh, yeah, it doesn't suffer from the abnormally long links or the bulky clasp or any of the pitfalls of the Marine Master 300. As much as I love that watch, I think this one is probably a better buy or a better value. Uh, so keep that in mind. But let's talk about the negative elements. I kind of touched on them throughout the video, but I could do without that super hard coating, that clear coating, because I haven't found it to be very impressive in deflecting you know, hairline wear marks and such. Maybe I'm too hard on my watches, but if the results are fairly negligible, I would just omit <laughs> the coating entirely because I don't find it particularly effective, even though it is, it is a little bit of a help, if that makes sense. I mentioned the daily accuracy being almost laughably bad for a $3,000 priced watch, but here's the big thing that I think most of you will agree with me on. We don't have a ceramic bezel insert. It looks like ceramic but it is, uh, it's metallic with a clear coating made to look like ceramic. And yes, it will have the coating on it, so it is you know, scratch resistant, but not to the degree that ceramic is. And you could argue a very valid argument that if you're spending close to $3,000 on a watch, it better have good ceramic you know, as a material for the bezel insert. But other than that, guys, I mean, it's so good. Is it perfect? Definitely not. Definitely area for improvement, but very, very satisfying. Again, if you like Seiko, this is gonna be up your alley, just like it's right up my alley. And my overall verdict, I absolutely love it, and I am sorely tempted, sorely tempted by this watch. 
to add to the rotation and to enjoy and to wear. Uh, this one is on loan from Brent L. Miller Jewelers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They're an authorized dealer that carries Seiko and Grand Seiko and Breitling and Omega and Tag Heuer. You know, they carry Tudor, they carry Hamilton, they carry Citizen, they carry Bell & Ross, they carry a number of great brands. And I'm going to be visiting their store in early February and filming in the store. And they're hosting a watch enthusiast meetup for a watch enthusiast in the region that I'm really looking forward to. And when I'm out there creating content and at the watch enthusiast meetup and all of that awesome stuff, I want to commemorate the trip by buying a great watch at the store and wearing it home to Utah. And so this one, this <laughs> Urimura edition, this is on the short list because it is that good. I enjoy it that much. It is in the running, but I don't know what I'm going to come home with. I don't know if it's going to be a Grand Seiko or a Seiko or an Omega or whatever it is. I'm not sure yet, but this is definitely in the running. And if it's not this time, I'm sure it will be in the coming months and years because I am sorely tempted. This is a good example of an awesome diver, an upscale diver from Seiko in their Prospects line. And I would definitely rate this nicer than the $1,000 priced Prospects Willer divers, but not quite at Grand Seiko level, just a little bit below Grand Seiko level. If that helps you, uh, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative and enjoyable and reach out if you have any specific questions. I would be more than happy to try to help with that. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.